All right, hi everyone. It's a full house here. Um, my name's Moshe Weitzman. I'm a longtime Drupal developer, now a member of Acquia. Um, we have a few members of the Drush team here. We have a great group of maintainers um, maintaining this project. I think maybe um, you guys introduce yourselves as you come up. How about let's do it that way? Um, so we're going to talk today about Drush 5. Um, Drush 5 is uh, going to be released today, right after this conference. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, there's a lot of exciting new stuff in Drush 5, and uh, we're just going to show some of that to you today. All right, so let's get right into it. So uh, one new feature is something called Drush shell aliases, okay? And uh, these are little um, aliases you can make to Drush commands, all right? Um, so the first one you, you see here has the key of non-core. And uh, on the right-hand side, pm-list and the option no-core, all right? So this is an example of making your own alias for something that you type all the time, okay? So, you know, I happen to not want to see the core modules when I run uh, pm-list for the most part, so I made a little shortcut for myself, non-core. You run drush non-core, and one of the first things that drush does is translate that into pm-list dash dash no core, all right? Um, the second example here, is an example of running a, a little bash fragment straight out of Drush, okay? So here, um, we're running git pull, and if that succeeds, we're running Drush update db, okay? So this doesn't ju just work for Drush commands, it's any bit of bash that you wanna put in this right-hand side, um, you can make it a, you know, accessible as if it was a Drush command, okay? Um, in order to use these, uh, you just open up your Drush RC file and uh, go ahead and edit, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you that now. Remember that the Drush RC files are available to you personally in your home directory. Um, in addition, they can live inside of a site, um, a Drupal site. Um, that would be the site slash all slash Drush directory. Okay, that's a new feature of Drush 5 is we have a dedicated place to put your Drush command files um, that go along with the site. Um, and of course, Drush RC files can be in um, server-wide locations. Um, and so that way, everyone on your development team who uses that server has access to these shell aliases, okay? So you're promoting um, common practices, safe practices, by using shell aliases, all right? All right, so um, this is the example.drushrc.php file. You'll find that in the examples directory. Copy that out to your home directory or to a server-wide directory, and Drush will read it and honor it. So in order to start using the shell aliases that we provide as examples, you can go ahead and start on commenting these things. Um, those, are the, those are two, or two out of three that I just talked about. Um, and uh, go ahead and add your own, okay? Um, if these look familiar to some people, this is um, pretty much exactly what git does with its git aliases in its .git config file, all right? Um, very handy feature. All right, one uh, nice thing that we added here, we added a lot to um, the command line environment so that issuing commands is more comfortable. Um, a new thing in Drush 5 is that an unrecognized option will give an error immediately. Uh, it will not let you proceed and basically ignore that option, all right? Um, this is also similar to how Git works. So just to see that in action, um, all 
Okay, so uh, that foo um, doesn't exist. Um, you know, more to the point, if I misspell um, the word, the dash dash help option, um, Dresh isn't gonna try to guess or proceed. It's gonna say, you need to clarify yourself. And I think that's, you know, an example of Dresh coming with proper, you know, seat belts. Um, and so that's a nice thing. Um, okay, so what I've done here is I've um, show, I'm looking at the help for the SQL dash dump command, all right? And um, one new feature is that this option, DB Earl, <clears throat> has an example value here, um, a MySQL database URL. Um, and in addition, it's in um, angle brackets, all right? Um, result file is um, in square brackets. So this is a hint to you as a help reader that a res result file optionally takes a value. That's what the, the square brackets are about. And dburl has a mandatory value. Okay, so uh, you'll see in Drush Core that um, we were pretty good about um, specifying if, if, you know, which ones took values and if they were required or not and giving you nice examples, okay? I encourage all of you who write Drush commands of your own, um, go ahead and use the additional features uh, when you declare your options so that you say what the example value is and if it's required or not, okay? That will be a real help to everyone who uses your commands. All right, so uh, we did a lot of work on Windows in this Drush 5 release. Um, we had um, sponsorship from Microsoft, which I'm very thankful for, um, to get uh, Drush working well on that platform. All right, um, they sponsored a Windows installer, um, and this is just like any other app on Windows. It's an MSI installer for Drush. Um, arguably, it's easier to install Drush on Windows than any other platform. Um, it puts all of the prerequisites for Drush um, right in your path, okay? Um, and uh, you can download that. There's a link on our project page to go out to drush.org and download that. Um, we worked hard on the unit tests so that we know that the commands work on Drush, uh, work on Windows. Um, we didn't quite get to 100% passing, but we got really close. Um, and the, you know, in general, the fails are because the tests aren't compatible, not because Drush doesn't work. Um, so all you Windows users, please go ahead and use the installer um, and report back bugs as you find them. All right, uh, Drush 5 has optional usage tracking. So um, if you go to that same drushrc.php file and you uncomment a couple lines, Drush will keep a, te a local text file of all of the commands that you run and um, it's anonymized so that the values that you put into your options and your arguments are stripped out. And every so often, Drush can optionally send that up to MongoLab, to our MongoLab account, um, where we can run some queries and figure out what commands people are using, what options people are using, and you know, publish some research for people to do there. Um, so I really encourage you guys when you install Drush 5 to go ahead and uncomment those lines so that we can get data, all right? Um, for those who are curious, there's two commands that go along with usage tracking. Um, so you can just see what uh, Drush is logging and you can see, um, you can control when it gets sent. Um, if you're you know, working for a, a large organization and you want to see how your organization uses Drush, you can actually change the endpoint so that it collects up to one of your um, data aggregation points instead of our MongoLab, all right? All right, so um, it's a super simple text file. Um, there's a Drush command to go view it. You can see that I use site alias a fair amount, archive dump, um, core status, here, my PM download, I have my Git information all here. 
Um, but you can also see that like my git username has been stripped out of the logging, right? So it's completely anonymized. Not quite ready for the end slide. Okay, so um, we'll take Jonathan or, yeah. in Safari. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hedstrom. I work for a uh, web development shop called Open Sorcery in Portland, Oregon. And I'm going to talk about Drush Make. Uh, how many people here have heard of Drush Make? How many people here use Drush Make? Awesome. Uh, so for those of you that haven't heard of it, Drush Make is essentially a package manager for your Drupal sites. Um, you can think of it as a shopping list where you, um, you write down um, you know, what you need, specific versions of projects, uh, modules, um, themes, and libraries. And then you run Drush Make, and it goes out and fetches all these specific versions, builds them into your Drupal site exactly where you need them to be, whether it's in Sites All or you know, a specific sites directory or in a profile directory. Um, it can handle patching, so if there's a, you know, a bug in a particular module that hasn't been committed yet, you can specify a specific version of that module and then tell it to, um, you know, go out and actually download. This is the uh, node stream make file, by the way. Um, so here you can see you specify patches and it will actually dynamically patch those as it processes the make file. Um, the good news, Drush Make's been around for a long time. Drush Make is now in Drush Core proper, so when Drush 5 is released, you, <clears throat> you will automatically have Drush Make at your disposal. Um, I can't, I'm not really gonna go into all the really cool things you can do with Drush. Um, I encourage people, or with Drush Make, I encourage people to use it uh, for their projects. It's a really, really good way um, to sort of see or get a, get a quick overview of what's going on in, in a particular Drupal project. Um, and if you go all the way and stop actually committing um, individual contrib modules to your Git repo and just use Drush Make, then it's a lot easier to do code reviews because you're not seeing somebody commit custom code at the same time they're updating, you know, 40 modules. Uh, you, can, you can pick out uh, commits a lot easier um, on custom code and things like that. Um, I'm going to go a little bit into the details of what's improved since we've brought it into Drush Core. Um, actually, I forgot my notes. Um, Drush Make used to have its own concept of tests. They were a homegrown solution that just processed some internal commands and checked an MD5 sum. We've ported those old tests over to Drush's PHP unit and added quite a few new tests and quite a few unit tests. Um, so Drush Make is now a lot uh, better tested um, so we can be confident when we're adding new functionality that we're not breaking things. Um, it's been refactored internally to use PM download, which is another internal Drush command um, for the most basic downloads. So if you're not using SVN or Git, um, it's gonna use PM download to actually um, grab the, do the processing of the download. Um, one benefit of that is that it, it uses um, Drush's cache, so if you're repeatedly running a make file, downloading 100 modules, once you've run that once locally, um, as long as you're not running with the no cache option, you're going to see that make file process almost instantly. Um, it also uses caching for git checkouts if you're not using the working copy command. Working copy essentially does a git clone and leaves a functional git re repository uh, for each project. But if you're not running that, then um, it'll, it'll use what's called a git reference and on subsequent builds, it will pull that locally and pull any updates instead of a completely new clone. So that speeds things up quite a bit. Um, and then it also caches uh, normal file downloads. So, you know, if, like library tarballs and things like that get cached locally. 
Um, and then the, the last big change is uh, projects are now processed concurrently. The default is four, so you're, and you can change that from the command line, so you're really only limited by your uh, bandwidth at that point. Um, so things process a lot faster, especially large, large make files. Um, and those are, those are the big changes since it's come into core. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that. This directory is fine, yeah. And where's your address? Um, it's on the path. You okay. can just call it. Well, I, mean, I just mean where's the directory? Uh, so it's C. I'll take it out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi. So uh, uh, my name is Owen Barton. I'm a, a, a director of uh, engineering at Civic Actions, and um, I'm going to be showing uh, three new bits of functionality we added to. Drush 5. Um, the first is uh, autocomplete, autocompletion. Uh, if you, you, you're used to the command line, you should be familiar with this. If you're you know, using ls, for example, you can hit tab. If you hit it twice, you get a list of uh, options. If you start put, putting in letters, you can press tab, and it's automatically filtered by the uh, characters you've entered so far. So here you can see I press tab. I'm just seeing the, the options that begin with R. Uh, so we've added the same functionality to Drush. So uh, now I can type Drush, and I can hit tab, tab. If you don't have anything in there, you have to do it twice. Uh, I've got a lot of options here. Um, so these are, these are all the completions I could choose from. Um, if you look, you'll see there's uh, uh, site aliases in here, there's commands, there's uh, shell aliases. Um, so I can go and, and if I start typing a, a site alias, so if I do uh, ampersand C, I'm, I'm, I, I, it means I want a um, uh, site alias that begins with C, I hit tab, I've got multiple, oh, something with that specific site, I think. Uh, but it completed to that site. Let me, uh, I'll just do it with self, so I think that works. So. Uh, so if I'm if I'm within a particular site, uh, I can I can complete and I'll, I'll this will show me the commands within this site. So it's kind of contextual. Um, so if you have commands installed on your site um, in the code base, it'll show you those commands as well on the completion uh, command line. So I can type uh, let me get, make sure I've got a, a D for example. I press tab. I get all the commands that start with D. Uh, I can type D. Uh, let's see. Let me find. Uh, or E, I mean, that's probably a more useful example. So I can do, use the cursor, I'm not used to this uh, laptop, here we go. <laughs> so E, exceed the E commands. So you can, you can go through the uh, uh, list of options available to you at any point in time. So um, here I'm, I'm adding, a, this is the enable command. If I press A, I get a list of the uh, modules that are available that I could enable. Uh, so I could do. Mm, those oh. aren't modules. They're not modules. No. It's some kind of bug. This is interesting. Okay. <laughs> what would be another. Uh, enable the, the bore module if you want. Okay. So you can see what I, I did there. So I, halfway through typing FO, I. Uh, hit tab, and it completed to forum. So we've got uh, um, probably the majority of commands in Drush Core uh, have completion for arguments. Um, so you, in, your, in, your, in your own commands, you can provide this as a hook uh, complete, and you essentially provide an array of all the options that are available on, on the site. Um, so you can, if you need to, you can bootstrap the site, and you, know, you could look at content types, you could look at fields, um, whatever it is your command deals with as arguments, you can, prov you can provide back in that hook, and it will complete. Uh, also, options are available. So uh, there's two kinds of options in Drush. There's global options, which apply everywhere, and then there's command-specific options. And so Drush actually doesn't care where the options are. 
um, in the command line. But to keep things simpler, rather than present the global options all the time, it's a little bit overwhelming. So what we decided is, is if you are on the, uh, before the command, it will show you global options. If you're after the command, it will show you command specific options. So um, let me just make sure I've got a command that has some options I can use. Um, so uh, global options, if I just press tab on here, I can see all the global options. The wrapping's a little funky, but um, uh, so I'm completing here. I'm just pressing tab. So you see I didn't have to type interactive. I just typed int and tab. And then if I type a command, uh, so DL, now if I do tab tab, that's uh, right, hyphen hyphen, now I'm looking at the options just for the download command. So I can type something like des and it completes to destination. So this, uh, you know, it definitely makes it a lot quicker to get around Drush. Everything's cached, so even if you have to bootstrap a site, it, it typically, re you know, responds really quickly. Um, and yeah, so, you know, you can complete commands, site aliases, uh, shell aliases, um, global options, command specific options, and arguments for commands which are provided by the command itself. Um, to set this up, uh, there's a couple of different options. Um, I'm not sure what the, uh, where Moshe keeps his drush, drush uh, directory, but the... Yeah, which drush? Which drush? Okay. Let me see if I can get over here. How did I, oh. Okay, so if I'm in the drush directory, uh, this file here, drush.complete.sh, uh, this is the file that uh, makes uh, Bash aware of the auto-completion. So you'll need to copy this. Um, if you have root access, if you're setting it up on a server, this is the, the, you know, the simplest way. There's a directory, etsy slash bash. I'm not sure if I'll have access. I don't think I have access, but it's, it's uh, bash underscore completion dot d. So you can just copy that file into that directory as root, and uh, Drush will be able to you know, pull in the completions on your command line. The other way of doing it is, uh, that's probably something you don't even want to do in your, um, you know, your personal user. You don't want it necessarily applying to all users on the system. Uh, is there's a, uh, an example bash rc file. So this actually includes the completion, and it includes uh, a whole bunch of other kind of shell related tricks. Um, if you just look at the file, it's just a text file. The instructions are at the top here. You need to include a little, uh, that little snippet of code uh, in, your, in your bash rc, your dot bash rc in your home directory. And that's, this is a file that's run every time you start a new terminal. So it means that uh, this file will run and it will set up, um, set up a number of aliases uh, for uh, different commands. So rather than typing uh, uh, drush, you can type dr. Rather than typing um, drush php eval, you can just type ev directly on the command line. Um, so I can do uh, something. Well, let's uh, make my quotes the other way around. Something like that. And as you can see, it, it ran that. Uh, that script. So it, it's you know, the most common commands you could just type directly. You can also do aliases. Uh, so it creates uh, bash aliases for your site aliases. So you can do. Uh, so I, I, here you see I'm not typing drush. This is something that's been added to my, my shell environment so that my shell environment is populated with my aliases. And when I, uh, when I call it, it will run Drush behind the scenes. So there's a bunch of little tricks. I'm not going to go through them all now, uh, but they're really fun uh, and useful if you, use, if you use Drush a lot. Um, the other things, uh, okay, I'm going to have to go back to the uh, directory I was at before. HTT commas, okay. So, uh, 
I was getting quite frustrated. I, I work with a lot of different sites, Civic Actions kind of helping out uh, all over the place. And uh, I was getting frustrated having to manage uh, Apache configuration, uh, you know, setting up vHost for each side or uh, altering vHost. Or, you know, I tried doing special wildcard vHost and you know, it kind of works, but it was also kind of a hassle and broke stuff. So, um, so I was like, well, maybe Drush could have its own built-in web server, a little like Django or, or Rails, and I've played with those, and it's really handy. And, uh, and I decided that was crazy, and then I waited a while, and I got more frustrated, and I decided I was going to try and do it anyway. So, so Drush 5 has its own built-in web server. Um, it's called Run Server, RS for short. I'm just going to use the alias RS, uh, the shortcut. Um, I, I'm inside a site here. You can also use it with an alias. Um, if I just type Drush RS, I think I must do it. Do we have another terminal somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh... Where is it? Uh, you had it. That one. Ah, okay. Okay. So if I type Drush RS, this. Hmm? Oh. Okay, I'm getting you uh, Choose a different port here. So this has brought up a, a built in PHP based web server. Uh, on port 8889, so I can, I can go to this address, and I can actually, if I just hit Control-C to close the web run server, if I put a, uh, a path on the end, oh, I need, need to, uh, it will open the site for me in uh, the web browser, so. So it's really fun. There's a couple of uh, prerequisites. Um, and it actually has two built-in, two, two web servers it can, it can work with. Uh, there's a, a built-in one that, that Drush comes with that uh, uses PHP CGI. So it's the PHP CGI binary. If you should be able to type PHP CGI dash B and get something back. Um, it needs PHP 5.3 and it needs uh, sockets built in, which is very common. Um, we do, some, some installations don't include PHP CGI, especially if you've got it built to just build an Apache module. Most of the kind of more popular uh, distributions and kind of map type things do come with CGI, I think. The other option is uh, PHP 5.4. Also comes with a, a built-in web server written in, in PHP, and Drush knows about that and is able to uh, start that web server up as well. So you can have two different options depending on depending on where you're at. Um, as you can see, it's listing a little log in the terminal. Uh, this will also include uh, includes watchdog messages. So if you log in, log out, you do a, a DSM call, um, it will output in your terminal. Uh, so it's passing those back. Um, there's also some tricks. If I can exit this. Um, there's an option dash dash user. So you can specify a user to log in with. I think I might already be logged into this site, but um, oh, maybe not. I don't know if this is that latest. There may be, a, I, we were working on this yesterday, so. Um, but it will, it will log onto the, uh, the site for you as an admin user, so you don't have to log on, you don't have to do, you know, uh, go to the password reset URL or anything like that. Um, I was gonna show the help very briefly here, keep an eye on the time. So, uh, you can choose the server, it will, it will try and decide what server you, to use based on what's available. Um, you can specify what IP you want the server to come up on, on def but by default it will, it will only show up on your, on your local machine. And I think there's a point I, sh I should have raised earlier. This is a development web server. This is not something that should be used for production or even really sharing with people you don't trust. It's not designed for you know, running any kind of site for any length of time. It's something uh, specifically to get around the, the problem of having to maintain a bunch of vhosts for, for development sites. So you could just go to a site, bring up a server, and have a play with it right away. So the, it's, it's built for convenience rather than uh, you know, performance or security or anything like that. So if you need to run a production site, use a, use a production web server. This is uh, development. Um, so yeah, so the, 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 this is kind of like a URL-like uh, schema for specifying the, the address and the port and the path. Uh, that you want the web browser to open open in. So you can change the port. You can have different sites come up on different ports if you want. 
Um, so you could actually have multiple terminals running different web servers at the same time if you like. Um, you can you can also pass in variables to the running to the site. So um, let me just show this briefly here. Um, And that didn't work either. I think this is another thing we added a couple of days ago. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, so that, and that, this doesn't set the variables. It doesn't change the variables. It just passes them into the running site and injects them into the conf. So typically, you would include this in your Drush RC. Uh, and it's really useful if you, for example, use devel module locally. You can have all your devel configuration, for example, or you know, disable uh, CSS -like aggregation or whatever else you like to do on your development environment. You can have it always apply that those variables to your site without having to even touch the database. Um, so having, having done this, we, uh, I, I wanted to have a little bit more fun, so I worked on uh, another, uh, another command that essentially just chains together a bunch of what Drush does or, or together. And, and the use case here is um, if you're a, a, you're a core developer or, or you develop lots of modules or you want to you work on some module and you're not really working on it in a, you know, in a client site or a, or a particular project, you know, you just have something interesting in that module, you want to do some work on that specific module, uh, or, or you want to do some work on core, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of overhead to like bring up an entirely new Drupal site. Drush makes it a lot easier, but you, you've got, you know, download Drupal, you've got to create your database, you've got to, uh, you know, add your Apache configuration if you're using that, you've got to do your site install command, which has a bunch of arguments, um, you've got to download your module, you've got to enable your modules, uh, and then when you're all done, you know, you try your patch, it doesn't work, you're like, I don't have time for this now, I'll just forget it. Then it's a whole bunch of work to undo it. You're left with, you know, a database, and in the database you're left with Apache V host. And I wanted something that just brings kind of a throwaway site up, so I can just bring something up. When I'm done with it, I blow it away, it's gone forever, I, I don't have any databases left over. So, uh, this is a command called quick Drupal, or essentially core quick Drupal. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can actually just run it uh, the, the, the alias is QD. If I just run Drush QD, in fact, I'm going to put a Y on the end since I, I don't like the questions. And it will, so what this is doing is going to download Drupal. It's going to install Drupal using SQLite. So it creates a SQLite database, so it's just a file in a directory. The, the whole thing is contained in one directory. Um, and it won't work because the, the port's already in use. I'm not sure what happened to that. And uh, it will it will bring up a web server and start your browser in the in the site. Um, let's just see if we can find this other run server command that's hiding away somewhere. I'm sure we found it. Well, it looks like it, it looks like it should go. Let's try again. So this this command actually inherits all the options that are available for all the commands that it, it uses. So you have all the options available for, there we go. So you have all the options available for download, site install. So you can see it's pretty fun. It's really nice. You just want to show Drupal to someone, it's like two letters. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, I don't think you can get simple than that. It's like, and you don't, you don't even need Apache installed. You don't even need MySQL installed. If you have, you know, uh, a reasonable PHP install, it will do all of this with nothing else. Just, uh, you need the SQLite extension, Drupal 7, uh, and then PHP CGI for the run server if you use that. I want to add one thing, Owen. Um, and so the example so far has been Drupal core um, and the standard install profile. But if you look in the examples, you can actually do this for other distributions of Drupal and other install profiles. So um, the directory we're in was made with a Drush Quick Drupal Commerce Kickstart. All right, so it went and got the whole Quick Start distribution from Drupal.org and installed it with the Commerce Kickstart profile. So um, this is quite a flexible command. And I could show that running, but uh, do you have it in your history? Do you know? Um, Many years of history. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, for a quick start? Yes. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, 
I'll just show the help. Okay. So this, I think, command, this command probably wins the, uh, the award for the command, Drush command with the most options. <laughs> hey, Owen, we should switch soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm not leaving. So uh, I'm not gonna go through all the options. These are the same options you'll be familiar with if you're used to the DL command, site install. Uh, I just wanted to point at the, the examples. So this example here, um, the, first, the first argument is the name of the site. So this is essentially just the name of the directory. Otherwise, it just creates a timestamp directory. So it's useful if you wanna come back to it later. Um, the, an, uh, additional argument to the names of any other projects you want installed. So it could be modules, you could just put deval on the end, you could put a theme or a, a whole series of modules. Uh, if the, there's a module that has the same name as the project, it will be enabled automatically. Um, and then this example uh, shows you uh, downloading a specific core, so a specific distribution from Drupal.org, and then installing a specific uh, install profile. So this will get to the site we, you, were, you were looking at earlier that's like a fully functional Drupal Commerce uh, instance with just uh, yeah one command. Uh, you can run it against it. You can you can use an existing core. So you'd run Drush Make first, uh, and then you could you could kind of use this to bootstrap it a little bit. Um, it's it's really designed as a very lightweight thing. It's not it can't replace uh, Drush Make with just uh, arguments. So, uh, but it's really handy if you just wanted to do something quickly. I got a hand over. I'm good. Thank you. And a um, couple of things I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the new Q commands in Drush. Uh, who here has used the Q API in Drupal 7? About what I thought. Um, <laughs> So for all you guys who haven't, the Q API is actually one of the coolest things that are, that's in Drupal 7, but no one talks about it. Um, there's a couple issues with it. Uh, but it, one, one, thing, one thing that's wrong is there's actually no like, default runner. When you declare a queue, I'm just gonna assume that everyone knows what a queue is. I don't have time for that. But uh, when you declare a queue, you use hook Q or hook cron Q info. And it's basically you set up your queue and give it the callback and it runs in cron. But there's no way to actually Sorry. There's no way to actually run, uh, run that queue without being in cron. And one of the great things about queues is you have this big list of work to do, and you want a queue, you could potentially have multiple queue runners all running simultaneously, doing all this work and running the queue down. If it's in cron, that's kind of hard to do. So there's a couple things. Uh, we added a default queue runner uh, to Drush, and also a, a, a small command to list your queues. So two, or Two modules that use queues, I think, is aggregator and feeds. So I enable those. Yep, so here you can see it'll show you what the queues are named that are declared, uh, how many items are in them, and the class it's using. And so you can see here, one of them is actually using the Redis queue as a backend. So all of these queue commands are compatible with any queue backend. So they'll work with Redis, Beanstalk, whatever. Some of this, if you've used Beanstalk, which I don't know, maybe no. Uh, some of this is kind of stolen from those. It's like everything, I took everything that was good about all the queue modules and just put them into one central queue runner. And so say if I just want to run that one queue, I can just do, oops. And what that's gonna do, that's going to look up the, uh, it's gonna look up the, the queue callback and then run the queue callback, just like what, what would happen in cron, but now it's not in cron. And if I do queue list again, yeah, it has no more items left. So the other thing this does is uh, it supports a queue hook that was originally defined by the queue UI module, which is just hook queue info, uh, where it lets you define a callback uh, that is not pulled in by cron. And so that's the other piece of it. And hopefully that, that hook is, is, will look more like what we end up with in, uh, in Drupal 8. So this command are cool, but still, you should be using queues. They're awesome. The other thing I want to show you is uh, who, here, who here works on multi-sites regularly? How many of you get annoyed when you want to use one site and run a drush command, but it actually runs on default? So you don't have to do that anymore. Um, and it, well, yeah, usually you CD to that site directory, and then all the, all the commands work, but that's really obnoxious. 
So now we have persistent site setting. So for example, one of these, actually I'll just go to one of mine, uh, one of my sites here. Let's do Drush site set. Okay, and it, yeah, so it's telling me that's my site now. Um, one thing that's broken, actually we offer, I need to fix this before we release, uh, we offer a Drush PS1 uh, bash function that comes with the autocomplete stuff. And so usually that site would show up in my uh, little PS1 here in my prompts so I could know that I was working on it, uh, similar to how Git prompts work. But yeah, I think we recently changed the path to, to something that broke. But that'll be fixed. And so now if I do drush status, you can see that I'm using that, that database in that site. And that'll persist for that entire session. So, and then if you want to get rid of that, you just do drush site reset. And now I get a crazy message because this is Drupal Gardens and we have a crazy message if you try to do default. But otherwise it would just say default. So yeah, that, that's what I'm showing you. Time for questions, I think. All right, everyone who has a question, could you just go up to the microphone? Uh, we'd be happy to answer. Hi. Um, this is a Drush Make related question, so whoever wants to answer. Uh, I'm a heavy user of Drush Make files for distribution-based deployment. Um, and one thing I've found when I'm actually creating a distribution is that when I want to test a rebuild of that make file, I have to commit it upstream, then build another version and compare across, make sure everything has came down correctly. Is there any possible way that you could build a registry of everything that has been pulled down when you built that site? and then have a Drush make rebuild? So there's, there's currently an issue that has not been fixed that I think addresses a, a rebuild, um, if, you're, if I understand your question, uh, wherein you could, instead of using PM update, you would update your make file and then run rebuild on an existing site. Then there's also two new commands, or options rather, that have been committed and those would let you, if you edit your make file and don't want to rebuild the whole thing, you can, you can do dash dash, I, f I forget the exact syntax, but it's in the help. It's something like dash dash libraries and then a comma separated list of just the parts you want to update. Okay. Uh, and you can also do that with projects. Yep. Thank you. Hi. Uh, do um, uh, Windows users need to run the MSI? Um, is there any reason why I should run the MSI? That's new. Yeah, so the question was, do you need to run the MSI installer uh, if you run Drush on Windows? You do not need to. You can certainly set up that environment on your own. Um, we are pretty careful to use um, PowerShell or Command Prompt. You don't need SigWin, for example, to run Drush on Windows. Um, but you do need a bunch of things on your path. That's really it. But it's already running, so there's no reason for me to have to install it again. Right, okay. Up. First of all, awesome work. Everything looks amazing. Um, appreciate it, for sure. Uh, question about the Q, um, the Q API stuff. Um, is there, and maybe I just don't understand the Q API enough to know, but it, like, as far as memory handling and stuff like that, um, do, does, it, does it handle the issue where, you know, if eventually you get to um, reach the PHP memory limit, does it, does it handle any sort of like, uh, forking the process or anything like that? Yeah, so it doesn't. I think that's, that's more of an issue when you have like long running queues. And if you're using like Beanstalk or Redis with like the, uh, in like the blocking mode where you have like a long running drush process that's like listening to that, uh, you can definitely run into issues like that. A uh, waiting queue is still the preferred queue runner for long running queues and it does do that. Um, I, have, I haven't ever run into that situation not on a long running queue. But uh, I, I would be open to, to adding that if, if that was the case. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Is 
there is there a way to use a make file without specifying a specific version number? Like just have it grab the most recent release? Yeah, if the default, if the, the minimum line you need is uh, you would say projects and then bracket, empty bracket equals views and it would just grab the latest version of views for whatever version of Cori you're building your make file. All right, well uh, thanks for coming. And, uh, you know, we'll see you on the command line. Please fill out the survey uh, on the DrupalCon site. Thanks.